channel. Thank you so much for being here today. Today's video is going to be part four of the toddler nutrition series. I'm going to go ahead and make sure to link all three previous videos in the description below. So definitely go ahead and check those videos out first before you check out this video. But it is going to be the last and final episode of the toddler nutrition series. So I'm definitely going to make sure this video is nice and short and sweet. And if you are new here or if you have not yet done so, please subscribe to my channel and like this video. If you like this video and if you want to see some more nutrition and diet related videos. Also, please go follow me and check me out on Instagram as well. I'm going to also leave that information in the description below. And if you give me a follow, I'll follow you back. Alrighty moves, so let's get into the meat of the video, which is going to be dietary cautions, specifically vitamin deficiencies, and we're also going to go ahead and talk a little bit about allergies as well. Food allergies, that is. <laughs> So vitamin deficiencies can have a very everlasting effect on the brain here in the United States and as well as the most of the rest of the world. Vitamin deficiencies are not normally seen in toddlers. It's normally just common in toddlers who are malnourished or children who unfortunately live in food poverty, which is an ab it's absolutely an issue in this country as well. But it's not something that you are really going to have to worry about as a parent in most cases because it's not that common. Not that common, I guess, in the retrospect of you know, most, the fact that most toddlers are nourished enough and you don't have to worry about vitamin deficiency, but there are two vitamins, well, one vitamin and one mineral we definitely want to make sure that we're on the lookout for, which is vitamin D and iron. And I know we talked a little bit about both of these in my vitamin and mineral video, but we're going to go, a we're going to dig a little bit deeper into the symptoms of the deficiencies for vitamin D and for iron. So for vitamin D, it's, uh, the deficiency symptoms are actually pretty simple. In its most severe form, they can cause rickets. And basically, vitamin D is very important for building strong bones and building strong teeth. So that is something you definitely want to make sure you're including enough of in your baby's diet. But the most important thing I wanted to talk about today is going to be iron deficiency because iron deficiency is actually going to be the most common deficiency that we see in toddlers when it comes to nutrition. So vitamin and mineral deficiencies can have behavioral and psychological effects on your child. It can cause them to feel sick, to maybe kind of feel out of sorts, to be easily irritated, somewhat aggressive or agitated, and they might be a little bit slow when it comes to learning. As caregivers, it is definitely our duty to make sure that we are noticing any of these symptoms and seeing if it might be something that can be related to the diet. We want to make sure we're on the lookout for diet and behavior connections. So if you do see any of these symptoms in your child, you might want to go ahead and take a look at those symptoms and see if they might be connected with their diet. So iron is going to have a huge impact on their intellectual development. It can affect their intellectual performance before any type of anemia is going to show up on a blood test. And anemia is going to be something that probably comes to your mind whenever you do think of iron deficiency, but it can actually affect the child intellectually before this shows up on a blood test. Iron is what helps to transport oxygen to your brain and it also helps to transport oxygen to all parts of your body. So it's actually very important intellectually and it's critical for cellular energy metabolism. It is also required to produce the neurotransmitters that allow us to pay attention in our brains. So that's why iron is so important or at least you know, only a few reasons why iron is so important. It's very important for many things. So basically, in an iron deficiency situation, we are in an energy crisis. And in these energy crises, 
our children are less motivated to learn, they don't easily pay attention, and it can also just cause them to lose interest in any type of learning at all because they feel so down on themselves because they don't have the energy to pay attention because they are not receiving enough iron. It can also cause your toddler to no longer want to persist at any type of intellectually challenging task. So your toddler can absolutely obtain iron from the diet in many ways, especially nowadays a lot of foods are fortified with iron such as ready to eat cereals and a lot of different grain products. They can also get iron in spinach and legumes and in meats as well. But the amount that they need in their diet, sometimes they don't eat enough or large enough quantities of those foods to obtain that amount. So this is where the problem is. This is why they have such a low attention span in some cases, in the cases where the child is deficient, is because they're not obtaining enough from the diet. Now, I do want to make it clear that when it comes to supplementation for vitamin D and also for iron as well, you definitely want to make sure you're careful and not just supplementing without consulting with your pediatrician because iron can absolutely be toxic and vitamin D can also be toxic as well. So before you even go there, you definitely want to make sure you check in with your doctor, with your pediatrician to see if this is something that you should look into because they should be the only ones that are prescribing iron supplements or vitamin D supplements because they're, they can definitely be toxic. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and move on to allergies food allergies specifically, because when you have a small child, when you have a toddler or a baby, everything that they're eating is going to be something that they're eating for the first time. So you really want to make sure that you have your eye on them when they're trying new foods, because this is the time whenever you're going to be noticing or realizing if your child has any food allergies. 8% of children in the U.S have some form of food allergy and that number just keeps getting bigger and bigger all the time. The most common food allergies are going to be these ones right here. Uh, these are probably the types of foods that come to your mind whenever you think of food allergies. And food allergies can be mild, they can just get kind of itchy, irritated, maybe their lip gets swollen, something like that or they can be very severe and your child might you know have trouble breathing or have to go to the emergency room so there's a wide spectrum of different types of reactions your child can have so we want to be on the lookout for any even inkling of a symptom of food allergies so it's just something you definitely want to be aware of and the good thing is is that food labels on any type of packaged foods they have to, by law, they have to have a disclaimer on the package if any of those foods that were listed are in the food that's in the package. Even if they have even touched equipment that has also touched those types of foods as well. And the same is going to also go for foods that are prepared in a restaurant. It absolutely has to state on the menu if any of the foods on the menu contain any of the items of food that someone might be allergic to or if they've even been in contact with the equipment. Okay, so the last thing I wanted to talk about is going to be breakfast for your child. I know it sounds very cliche and I'm sure you've heard it a million times for you yourself as an adult, but breakfast is very important and it's especially important for our toddlers. We want to make sure that they're having a good breakfast in the morning. I definitely don't think you should force them to eat if they're not hungry, but we want to avoid all of those processed and sugary, cheap, easy options to feed our children for breakfast. I know it's hard because I know that a lot of parents are rushing in the morning and it might they might not have enough time to really prepare a nice nutrient dense breakfast. But as you know, as parents, we really need to try our best to do this because that's what's going to keep them focused during the day. That's what's going to give them energy and it's very important. Okay, everybody. Well, thank you so much for watching the video today. Remember to subscribe to my channel and like this video. Let me know in the comments if you have any ideas or if there's any other types of videos that you'd like to see me do. I love you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye.